Uh, hi guys, good afternoon. A big warm welcome to everybody. Uh, uh, we have me fans here. Me fans, make some make some sound. Yeah. We have all our media colleagues. Uh, we have a lot of partners. We have distribution partners, and we also have with us 130 platinum preferred partners. Welcome to all of you guys. So my name is Manu. I lead Xiaomi's business in India, and I want to start with the most basic thing that we always talk about, which is our philosophy of innovation for everyone. Which means that we want to launch really great quality products, very innovative products with highest possible specs, and you want to launch them at honest price. And the reason why we keep repeating this is because this is truly core to who we are. This is what defines what Xiaomi is all about. And this has worked really well for us. If you look at last six quarters, we have been the number one brand in India, and I really hope the seventh quarter is coming very soon, the result for seventh quarter, that we'll continue to extend this. Now, one thing which has helped us a lot over the last few quarters to increase the gap between us and the second largest brand in the country has been our exponential offline growth. You know, we started our India business about four or five years ago, and for the first three years, we were mainly focused on online. And we reached a 50% market share. And we used to think, how come we have 50% market share in online, but almost zero in offline? So we started building our offline journey just about two years ago. At that point of time, our market share in offline was less than 1%. And in a short period of just one and a half, two years, it grew from less than 1% to more than 20%. If you look at the number of stores that we have today, we have three different kinds of stores. The large Mi Home stores, which are company operated, these are larger format ones, about 1,500 square feet, and are mainly present in metro and large cities. And then we have Mi stores, which are mainly meant for rural, which are exclusive stores, few hundred, few thousand of them across different villages, towns, and they try to bring the same Mi Home experience in small villages. villages. And then we have Mi Preferred Partners. And thanks to all these three kind of stores, we have reached a 200, even at this scale, we are growing almost like 200%, 2x uh, quarter on quarter. So if you compare it in last three months from December 2018 till March 2019, just our offline business grew almost 2x. Now, when we launched Mi Stores a few months ago, we said we will launch 5,000 Mi Stores this year in 2019. And happy to share that we're on track. So yesterday we inaugurated a 1,000 Mi Store in India. Thank you. This was in the town of Rivadi, very close to Delhi. And these are some of the pictures from this particular launch, a thousand Mi store in India. Um, again, an exclusive store, a mini Mi home kind of format for rural areas. So across these thousand Mi stores, they are present in 19 states in India. They are present across 300 cities or districts, and they've been able to generate 2,000 employment in India. Now this is really important, really incredible, that many of these stores or the store owners were not doing any kind of retail. Leave aside mobile retail, they were not doing any retail, including grocery or kirana or anything else. These are people who were young, passionate, they really loved Xiaomi as a brand, and we gave them an opportunity to open a Mi store in their respective town and village. Now, we've got great feedback on Mi Homes and incredible feedback on Mi stores, and we really want to extend a Mi Home kind of an experience even in bigger cities, but a smaller format. So we're launching a new format called as Mi Studio, which is like a mini Mi Home in smaller in bigger cities, uh, cities like Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Lucknow, Kanpur, Jaipur, these kind of cities. This is nothing but a small Mi Home concept, while Mi Home is 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 square feet. This is typically a 600, 800 square feet kind of a format, and this is how it looks like. This is the same premium look and feel as a Mi Home, but much smaller in size. And these will be run by our partners, not by company, unlike Mi Home, right? So we just inaugurated our first Mi Studio in Bangalore last week, and the second one in Bombay. So two Mi Studios are running as a pilot right now. When we launched the first one, 
a lot of customers just walked in and surprisingly all of them wanted to buy Redmi Note 7 Pro. <laughs> so I did a hand delivery to all these customers uh, at the time of launch. So with this me home, me studio, me stores and me preferred partners, we hope that we can have 10,000 retail shops by the end of this year, 10,000. And <laughs> thank you. We believe 10,000 is a pretty big number. And with having 10,000 shops, either exclusively for Xiaomi or focused on Xiaomi, all our Mi fans, I know you, many of you guys have had complaints that you cannot buy products and it is still in short supply. But you should be able to buy products at ease across all these 10,000 shops across the country. And we hope 50% of our business this year can come from offline. Right? Thank you. Now, while we're focusing on offline, this does not mean that we are letting go of a focus on online. Of course, we are an internet company. We are an e-commerce company. We have our own e-commerce platform, me.com. And we want to ensure that we continue to serve our customers, our me fans, in the online segment. So online is where we have been a dominating brand. We've had a 50% market share for approximately last two, three years. Every single quarter, we have a 50% market share. And we're almost like six, seven times bigger the number two, number three, number four brands in the country. And if you look at just the online segment, the top five selling phones in online last year, all of them, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all of them were Xiaomi phones. Now, if you look at the number fourth one, which is the Redmi Y series, this is a new series that we launched two years ago with Redmi Y1. And that was a selfie-focused phone. Now, this was a phone uh, through which we were trying to target the new generation, Generation Y. When we look at the entire smartphone market, approximately 40% of the devices are bought by young people, people who are under the age of 24. And for Redmi Y series, we see this number to be significantly higher, more than 50%, which means a lot of people, people like people who are sitting here, people who are college students, first-time jobbers, they are the ones who are buying Redmi Y series phones and they're using to take selfies and uploading it on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and many more platforms. So today, I'm happy to share that we have shipped more than 7 million phones of Redmi Y series in India, which is Redmi Y1 and Y2. Thank you. Uh, in fact, we have received great feedback for both these devices. For Redmi Y2, a lot of people said great things. For example, PC Mac said it's a, it has a killer selfie. India Today said that no other phone at its price point can give you better selfies, period. And Business Line said that Redmi Y2 takes selfies that are ready to be shared on social media without any editing or without any filter. So happy to share that we are going to upgrade Redmi Y2 to Redmi Y3. And to talk about this, I'll call on stage somebody who is more handsome, more knowledgeable than me, Sir Anush Sharma. Thank you, Manu. A very warm welcome to all our media colleagues, uh, our strategic partners, a lot of you who've joined us today, uh, thousands of you watching us live across different platforms, and of course, our me fans, thank you for being here. We are talking about the Redmi Y3. Now Y3, or the Y series, as Manu mentioned, has been a little more on the younger side. Now what we've realized is, for that group, why was the Y series so successful? Because they were creating more, they were sharing more, they were consuming a lot more than their peers. And uh, this is something that really worked for the Y1, Y2. Uh, and we did a lot of focus on, of course, the front camera and the selfie, because it was their own creativity that was shining through in these uh, products. And we've taken all those learnings, and we've taken it to the Y3 with a 32 megapixel super selfie camera. Uh, what we realized is, the camera has become the ultimate tool for self-expression, and that's why we had to step it to the next level. In fact, uh, we had an internal joke going where our front camera on the Y3 
is much better than the primary camera on most of the phones in the industry. It's incredible here. Uh, but let's, let's talk about this tool. Let's talk about this key tool for self-expression and we'll dive straight into the camera. And talking about the camera, of course you saw some great reviews that we got on the Y2. Uh, with the Y2, we had a 16 megapixel AI selfie camera. And of course, uh, it was time and again called out as the best in its price class. Uh, the best selfie camera that you could buy. Uh, sometimes you didn't need to edit, no filters, you could put it up. And of course, people were loving that selfie and hence we've sold more than 7 million of the series in about 18 months. With Y3, we still wanted to be the best selfie camera, but not at this price. We wanted to be the best selfie camera in any smartphone in the world. And for that, we've got the 32 megapixel all new sensor that's coming in. I will talk about the sensor. Uh, this sensor alone is almost 22.5% larger than the amazing camera that you had on the Y2. So you can, you can kind of start imagining what you will see as a result, the result of this. You've got more pixels coming in, and of course, a higher resolution. This is the highest resolution sensor in the industry available uh, today on the front side. Uh, but you've also got more light coming in because the sensor size is bigger, and hence more details as well. Uh, all of this combines to give you incredible selfies. Selfies like this one. Now this has been shot on the Y3. And of course you can see the detailing that comes in. It is unseen. Nobody else has details like this. Uh, if you look at the facial detailing, it is tremendous. Uh, of course, not just that, but the overall color reproduction, the skin is natural. And if you go beyond the subject and look at the background, uh, the colors, the dynamic range that's coming in because of this all new sensor uh, is absolutely incredible. Right? That's one example. Uh, let's take a look at another selfie. And talking about dynamic range, let's kind of dial it up a little bit. Now, this one is incredibly hard to get. For most cameras, they struggle with a selfie like this. What you have is the subject is in some kind of a shade, but you've got harsh lighting on either side. It's able to capture the details, the facial details, almost in, the entire details coming in perfectly while retaining the background. It's not lost any of that. Of course, what you can see is the colors, uh, and this is where the wider dynamic range of this all new front camera really starts shining. Uh, and not to forget, of course, it is a bigger sensor. It can take in a lot more detail. In fact, uh, when I compare to the Y2, you can even print much larger pictures. Almost six feet by eight feet size. Imagine printing your selfie at that size. Uh, so selfies that you take on the Y3 are good enough to print, so we just decided to make a mock print out of it. Of course, you get incredible selfies that you've seen. But don't take our word for it. What we did was we went one step further and actually printed this. Uh, can we show this, Sumit and Gautam? So this is a photograph clicked on the Y3. It's a selfie that has been printed. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. So that's what the 32 megapixel camera can do on this. But let's look at, you know, how do we kind of compare this? Where does it stand versus other smartphones? Uh, so we compared it with a device, a Samsung A50 and uh, the Vivo V15 Pro. Now these are at about 20 and 30,000 each. What you can clearly see is the overall detailing is far superior on the Y3. Uh, the facial detailing as well as the hair color and the highlights that show up in the hair color with the Y3. So you see this tinge of burgundy that comes in which completely gets missed out in the other two. So not just from uh, the detailing part of it, the color reproduction, but while the subject is completely in focus and you're getting all the detail, if you take a look at the background, and we chose this background for a reason because this was a little hard to get, uh, it also shows you the, the capabilities of the camera where it's able to capture the entire grill at the back. And again, the Y3 outshines these two phones uh, quite significantly. Uh, coming at 
taking a step down to other mid-range devices, there the gap obviously uh, goes up quite a bit. Uh, so with the Y3, as you can see here, uh, the colors, not just on the jacket, but her facial colors are more natural. Uh, it's, it's a lot more vibrant as a selfie, but even the background that you see is a lot more visible on the Y3, uh, compared to the U1 as well as the Samsung M30. Now, uh, in fact, let me go a little closer, because this is pa a part that you would have missed out. If you take a look at her hair, now again, the, the color tinge that's coming out in the hair is a lot more apparent on the Y3 than the others. Uh, now, this is not just the fact that it's got uh, a better selfie camera and better hardware, but of course, the Xiaomi's own AI algorithm coming in. And let's talk about that a bit more. So we've got AI Beautify 4.0, combined with the 32 megapixel camera for incredible results. Uh, now, with AI Beautify, it does not do too much. Uh, it looks at your skin tone, fixes that. Sometimes, for example, in the summer heat, you've got that shine coming in, so it'll dampen that part out. Of course, uh, it is focused on the subject and not at the background, and you will see those examples. So as one example, and this obviously was taken in our office, so you've got Manu and you've got Swaroop, and we took this selfie uh, with the Y3, and this is without Beautify off. Uh, and of course, what you need to do is take a look at some of the elements. So look at the light shining on the skin, okay? Uh, look at all the blemishes. Now this is with AI Beautify off. Now when we change to AI Beautify on, you'll see very subtle changes, so you have to look very, very closely at this. Okay, so AI Beautify off, Beautify on. Okay, uh, this one is not short on the Y3. Uh, so, uh, so jokes aside, of course what you do see is the su same subtle changes that I was talking about. Uh, where This one is an incredible selfie uh, picture on its own. But if you look at the small blemishes, uh, small marks that you see on a face, that is getting fixed automatically by the AI when you turn on Beautify. So there's subtle changes, it does not do a drastic change, but just fixes the small elements that need to be fixed. What's also very interesting is it's only fixed her face part of it, but left the hair untouched, because that does not need AI yeah, Beautify coming in. And it's also intelligently detected that what's the background like, and it's, the background is untouched again. So the Beautify part only comes in for the parts that need that fixing. It's not overpowering, and of course, for those people who are naturally good looking, a lot of you guys here, you can turn it off completely. Uh, so you've got 32 megapixel with AI Beautify. You've seen those results. We've gone one step further. You've got Auto HDR in the front. Now why is Auto HDR important? Because sometimes you can't control the light source. And an example like this, where you've got all the details, but of course the background lighting is super harsh. Right? So you've got the entire sun coming down, and of course, uh, all of you guys would have seen the, the power of the sun outside. It's super hot. Now, in this case, you've got the detailing, but still you start missing out on the background. With HDR enabled, it'll automatically kick in and give you a much more pleasing selfie. You get the background, you get the foreground, you get all the details in that single shot. Yeah? Okay. So this is the daytime. Of course, what we know is most of the selfies are taken at night, hopefully not after 2 p.m. or 2 a.m., but uh, night selfies are the ones that most phones will struggle with. And that's where this 32 megapixel camera starts to shine. Low light selfie. Now how this works, because you've got 32 million pixels and a large sensor, when it detects low light, it takes four adjacent pixels, combines them into one single large superpixel. Uh, a 1.6 micron superpixel, which lets in a lot more light. Uh, not just that, because of this, you've also got superior dynamic range coming in, even at night, which is something which is quite new. And because of this new technology, this sensor is really, really new. Uh, you don't see it in too many phones. You get an improved 
photoelectric conversion efficiency. What does that mean? The same amount of light will produce more signals from the sensor, and that signal information is captured as an image. So that means even in lesser light, because of this improved efficiency, you get brighter pictures. In some cases where others can't see, you will be able to see details. Let me show you an example. So this one is in an incredibly low lit uh, area. What you can clearly see is, of course, the entire pullover details, the pattern that you see on the pullover is perfectly there. The red, the V around the, the neck, that red is amazing. Of course, the facial details and the background is visible. But on its own is one point, if you compare it with a couple of other devices, where does it stand? Now this is where you start seeing a stark difference. Right? On one side, of course, it is losing a lot of uh, details. And on the other one, it starts kind of blurring it out because it's not able to find that focus properly and get you those details, which the Y1, again, because we saw it has a super pixel, it has improved photoelectric conversion efficiency, you get a much better photograph. But not just the face, not just the subject alone. Uh, let's look a little closer. Look over her right shoulder and the background. And this is a part that most people will miss out on. Let me zoom in. You can't even see those taps at the back. So there are four taps which are clearly visible on the Y3, but the others just is, is pretty much dark noise. And the other part, of course, is uh, from a subject clarity perspective, you can even see the, the twinkle in her eye. Uh, that also has been captured really well with the Y3. Uh, so that's the night mode. And of course, to enhance it further, you've got screen flash. So in case you need it, that's also an option there. Another thing that we brought in with the Y2 was the portrait selfie. Now, portrait selfie has become incredibly important. Again, one of the key uh, models or modules of self-expression. People love taking these portrait selfies. And of course, with Xiaomi's semantic segmentation engine coming in, we've got some great reviews. For example, Economic Times called our AI portrait mode, modes uh, edge detection great. Right? Uh, adds a great bouquet to the photographs, make them natural looking. How this works is, our proprietary AI engine detects the subject and where that subject ends. So it's, it's for your self-portraiture and beautifully fades out the background. So you get this incredible 3D looking like portrait shots from the front camera. And because of the enhanced AI, you don't need a second camera. You don't need that depth sensor. It's able to do that with the information that it's getting from the front camera alone. And of course, when we take all of this and combine it with a 32 megapixel sensor in the front, you get incredible results. So if you look at the Y3 and the edge detection on the Y3, compared to more expensive devices like the A50 or the V15 Pro, you get much better results. Uh, not just the edge detection, but of course, also keeping the entire facial details. And uh, if you look at the hair details, all kept in really well. So that's from a portrait perspective. Uh, one more thing that you do when you're taking portraits, it's sometimes it's alone, but mostly it is with friends. And for that, we've added an 80 degree field of view in the front camera. So you can capture a lot more. You capture your friends, groups, and it's easier to take those selfies as well. That's not all. From a selfie perspective, we've also realized when people are taking those selfies, at that point when you're taking that selfie, you have to press a button or maybe the volume key uh, in our phones, uh, there was some shake coming in. So for that, we're bringing in shake-free selfies. It's pretty simple. You hold up your palm, and it triggers a countdown to the selfie. So essentially, you get about three seconds to put your pose in and get that perfect selfie every time. And it's not one advantage of this is it can be slightly remote triggered, so you don't have to be holding the phone. So you can actually get a lot more creative. You leave it on a stand, you are in a group of friends, at a distance, and you can fire these up. Makes for some incredible creative work. And of course, uh, you guys should try this out. So you can get remote selfies clicked. Of course, you, the advantage of doing a selfie is you can see exactly what is going to be captured. 
And with the 32 megapixel camera, you can get these selfies done really well in a creative way. With the Y3, we are also introducing electronic image stabilization on videos in the front. Now this is a new one. Uh, again, it's becoming important because a lot of our fans are taking shorter videos from the front camera, whether they're recording their daily lives uh, to share or for themselves. And that stabilization is something that we are bringing in with the Y3. So you get 1080p full high definition videos with electronic image stabilization in the front camera. Again, uh, one of the new uh, parts that we are bringing in with the Y3. And because you've got the sensor, you've got enhanced software, what we've also done is we've added a 360 degree AI face unlock, more of a convenience feature, less to do with selfies, but essentially you don't have to align your face with your phone anymore, especially if you're lying down and reading. Uh, at any particular angle, uh, the phone works. It is still secure, it will not work with anyone else's phone, it's just the, uh, in anyone else's face, it's just the trusted face that it will unlock to. Well, more of a convenience feature. So, to sum it up, incredible 32 megapixel super selfies, you get a 32 megapixel all new sensor in the front, like I said, uh, beats a lot of other phones, the main camera at the back, and we've taken that and put this here. Uh, you've got AI Beautify, you've got Auto HDR coming in. Of course, incredible results in low light because of the super pixel coming in. Uh, you've got shake-free selfies with the palm shutter, and of course, lets you do a lot of uh, creative uh, creation. You've got EIS in the front, so stabilized videos from the front camera, especially if you're vlogging and things like that. A wider field of view for group selfies. Uh, of course, portraiture and the AI semantic segmentation engine that comes in with. Uh, our software and AI face unlock for convenience. So that's just the front camera alone. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Uh, moving on, while we're talking about cameras, let's talk about the dual rear camera as well. On the Y3, we've added a 12 megapixel main camera, and this sensor is a 1.25 micron. That means compared to a 1.12 micron, which is normally found, you get up to 25% more light coming in. More light means more details. And it has a two megapixel uh, secondary camera for the depth of field. What you get when you combine these two are incredible portrait shots. So let's talk, look at some of those portrait shots. I'm gonna click, yes, okay. Uh, so this one is taken on the rear camera. And again, what you can see is the edge detection. And this one is a little complex because you've got so much happening in the foreground on his shirt. Uh, still, it's able to detect the edges perfectly, apply this beautiful depth of field going at the back. Uh, another portrait shot, and this one is a lot harder because what you've got is her dark hair blending in with the dark background. And Xiaomi's AI semantic segmentation engine combined with this depth of field camera is able to detect that edge. So if you look at right up top, you'll be able to see that the hair is still in focus while the really dark background is not. And that is, of course, one of the, the beauty things that you get with our semantic segmentation engine. Uh, not just for people, uh, even if you take a, a depth of field shot with objects, and this is a really good example, but you can clearly see as you move away from the main subject, the entire blur keeps increasing. And this is almost your you know, SLR-like quality, but this is what you want to achieve with a proper optical lens. Uh, and this, again, is shot on the Y3. Uh, the Y3's rear camera also comes with AI scene detection uh, for the first time on the Y series. Uh, so you get 33 different categories. It detects what you're taking, and you can switch this AI on and off. Uh, but with AI scene detection, it detects 33 different categories, whether it's in a cloudy sky and you're trying to take the sunset, or whether uh, you're trying to take city and architecture and landscapes, or maybe gardens and flowers. It detects that, enhances the entire image, so that the entire image looks a lot better. Uh, for example, if you take a look at this one. Now this is, it detects this as architecture or a building, and with the AI scene detection, 
it will automatically enhance the colors in the foreground, improving the overall visibility of the uh, building. But if you see at the back, I'll just go back, the sky is also subtly more bluer, uh, makes for a lot more pleasing uh, results. The back camera has, uh, as we call it, buttery smooth video experience. Uh, or if you're a Punjabi, then Makhan. Uh, so you get full video recording at 60 frames per second. So you have that as well. And at the back, again, you have electronic image stabilization. So when you're walking around, making those short videos, uh, the shake is reduced dramatically. Another new thing on the Y3 camera is uh, the integration of Google Lens. Now we've built this into the camera app itself. You don't need to go out and get a separate app. And of course, uh, Google Lens is incredibly useful when you're searching for things. For example, if you point them at my shoes, or the same shoes that you see there, uh, it will detect that these are me sports shoes and it'll take you or give you options for going to me.com and buying them. So you get that intelligence coming in into the camera as well. So to sum it up, for the Y3, of course, what you get is the 32 megapixel super selfie. Uh, it has got AI Beautify, it's got auto HDR, even at 32 megapixels, full resolution. Uh, you've got a super pixel at 1.6 micron uh, for amazing night photography or night selfies. And when you need it, it can be augmented with a screen flash. You get portrait selfies, and you saw the portraiture that comes in through the front camera is absolutely incredible. You get shake-free selfies with palm shutter. You have EIS for the first time on the front camera. And of course, a wider field of view uh, when you're taking group uh, images. At the back, you have a 12 plus 2 combo. Uh, the 12 is a 1.25 micron, so it's a larger sensor, lets in more light, more details. Combine that with a secondary one for amazing depth of field shots that you just saw. You have AI scene detection, enhances the photographs that you take. And of course, Google Lens built in, uh, full HD recording at 60 frames per second with EIS is just a whole lot of things happening on the camera. A marked change, a massive bump from the amazing Y2 that we already had. So that's the first big thing in terms of cameras. Uh, the second one, and this is uh, fairly new, fairly unique, is the design. Now, Y2 does not look like anything that you've seen. Uh, what we've done with the Y2 is uh, recently with the Note 7, we introduced the Aura design. So we're extending that. Now, Aura design is not the way the design looks, but it's a philosophy. Means it has to be more immersive, has to have the highest level of craftsmanship, and hence what it looks. And the third part is, while doing all of this, it still has to be extremely functional. Right? You cannot start giving up on things just because you want to make your device look better, thinner, cooler, whatever. So there's essentially no compromise that should come in with the design. Uh, so let's go with the first one, immersive design. Uh, this one sees a massive jump from the Y2. Uh, you have a 6.26 inch HD plus IPS LCD display. It's a 19 is to 9 display with a dot notch, uh, giving you that entire immersive experience. Uh, you also have a higher contrast ratio, 1500 is to 1, and it's a brighter display at 415 nits. In fact, while we've gone from a 5.99 on the Y2 to a 6.26, uh, because we've stretched the, uh, the screen from edge to edge, it's actually two millimeters shorter than the previous one. Not just shorter, but it's also narrower by a millimeter. So you have a larger screen in a smaller uh, footprint on the Y3, uh, making it a lot more easier to hold. And of course, that itself comes with the Aura design philosophy uh, on the whole functionality and the practicality part of it. Uh, the Y3 is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5, uh, so Y2 had a Corning Gorilla Glass 3, so we moved to 5. Uh, resistant against scratches, you don't need a screen protector coming in between you and your selfies, uh, so it looks great. And you've also added a reading mode. This one is certified by TUV. Uh, essentially what it does is, at night, it'll cut out the blue light, making it easier to read. Uh, and cutting this blue light out uh, helps some people sleep better.
So we all, I think that's the last thing we do. We look at our phones before we sleep. So hopefully this helps in some way. Uh, moving to the next part is the craftsmanship. And here we are bringing in Aura Prism. It's a fork to the Aura design. We've taken a step forward and we've got a prism design. As you can see, the prism word kicks in. And this is a result of a, a unique seven layer process. So there are different materials, different inking, and different gradients that all come in to give you this incredible reflective effect. So essentially, it's, it's a primary color, but when light falls on it, you get this prism-like uh, diff diffraction coming in. And this also is achieved because of you've got hundreds of thousands of micro lines that you will not be able to see. There are some visible, but most of them you will not be able to see. And all of that combines to give you this amazing effect. Instead of me talking about it, let me just show you how it looks. Looks absolutely stunning. So that's the elegant blue uh, with Aura Prism. Uh, when you hold it in your hand, you'll be able to see that diffraction coming in. It looks stunning. Uh, we have one more color. And this is the bold red. What's also really interesting is, unlike a regular gradient, the gradient actually goes outwards. So it starts in the center and goes outwards to the side, rather than from one side to the other. Uh, and this makes it look unique. Uh, this device looks unlike anything else that you've seen in the market. And of course, uh, the third one we have is the classic black, or the prime black. Uh, a lot of people keep asking us for black. Uh, so you've got a really classy one here. And of course, as you would guess, Manu only uses the black one. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about this aura design, the entire back has been curved. And that curvature comes in and matches this frame. And the frame is also rounded. In fact, let me dive a little deeper here. So what we've got is a G3 surface continuity design. Essentially, when you are kind of matching the back panel with the frame, it looks like it's, it's just one part. And of course, we've got, at the back you saw, you've got the seven layer design coming in. But when you hold it in your hand, it gives you that assurance, that continuity design, without it feeling as if it's multiple parts coming together. It looks incredible. It feels even better. So these are the three colors. You've got the elegant blue, of course, the prime black, and the bold red. All three colors together. And then the third part of Aura design, it has to be functional. Right? While you've got such a beautiful phone, uh, you can't skip out on the basics. So of course, it does have a 3.5 mm jack. Uh, somehow it, it is still uh, something to be called out. Uh, you've got a fingerprint sensor. And uh, our fan favorite, you've got the IR blaster still there in the phone. With the IR blaster, your phone turns into a universal remote, controlling thousands of uh, appliances. You've got TVs, ACs, game consoles, uh, fans, projectors. Name it. If it has an IR uh, receiver, you can pretty much control it with the Redmi Y3. Uh, one thing that we've also retained from Y2 and we've enhanced is a two plus one card slot. So you get. <laughs> so you get dual SIM, dual Volti. Essentially, you can have two Volti SIMs in uh, SIM one and two, and you can add a micro SD card to it. So if you need to expand your storage. And in this case, the SD card slot can support up to 512 GB. So you enhanced it even further. So overall, our aura design, you got an immersive dot-notch display. It's a bigger display in a smaller footprint. So you've gone to a 6.26 inch. It's a 19 is to 9 aspect ratio. Higher contrast, brighter display. And of course, uh, reading uh, blue, low blue light uh, reading mode uh, certified by TUV. 
You've got the aura prism. You saw how incredible that looks. You've got that seven layer process coming in, giving it that effect. And obviously, you've got uh, G3 surface continuity design so that it blends in perfectly with the frame. And it's still functional. It retains everything that you've loved about the Y2. And of course, anything else that you may need. Uh, talking about anything else you may need, there was one thing that we got feedback on from our Mi fans. Uh, something that was common for Y1 and Y2. And that was power. Uh, so both Y1 and Y2 had a 3080 mAh battery. But with the Y3, we've decided to step it up. You got a 4000 mAh two-day battery. So 33% more power. Obviously, if you've got a 32 megapixel selfie camera, you're going to be doing a lot more. You'll be creating a lot more. And you've got more power to back that up. But not just the hardware part of it. We've also enhanced things on the software side. There are more than 30 optimizations that come into MIUI 10 with the Y3. So your battery life is going to be a lot more than just 33% more. In fact, you can watch YouTube for nine and a half hours. Or for example, play Asphalt 8 for nine hours. Or if you can, uh, be on a call for 40 hours. Uh, Overall, massive improvements in terms of battery life across the board. 60% improvement versus the Y2 on uh, call time, 56% on music, video recording is up 30%, gaming is up 28%, even the standby time has gone up to 18 days. So overall, from a battery perspective, the Y3 sees a massive jump compared to the Y2. And to power this entire system up, we've used a Qualcomm Snapdragon 632. Now, 632 is an octa-core chip. It's based on the cryo architecture, which is Qualcomm's semi-custom architecture. And the benefits that you see is, versus the Snapdragon 625 on the Y2, you have a 31% improvement in pure performance. And of course, again, you add the whole MIUI 10 optimizations, and it becomes even better. MIUI 10 with Android 9 out of the box. So that's the things about Y3. But what we've not forgotten about Y3 is our eagle-eyed focus on quality. We are extremely serious about giving the highest quality products. And with Y3, we're not skimping on that. Few things. For example, we know an average person drops their phone from a height of one meter seven times a year. Uh, actually, we didn't really follow everyone. Uh, it, this is the data that we got from Corning, so we're just putting it here. Uh, so for that, of course, we've added Corning Gorilla Glass 5, so it gives you that protection in the front. Uh, this is also coming with P2Y nano coating. So that makes it splash proof. Again, a first. Uh, we will have the monsoons coming up. And this is going to be extremely handy, combined with the fact that all ports have a, a rubber seal there. So all ports, all buttons, wherever you could have moisture creeping in, we've protected the Y3 there. And of course, the P2I coating takes care of the entire uh, product. Uh, but before monsoons, you're going to have summers. And for summers, this comes super handy. Uh, you've got the dual pyrolytic graphite sheets. Now, this is something that only Xiaomi has done. And this is something that we've done only in India, because we understand the diversity of the weather here. We understand how hot it can get. And just decreasing the surface temperature of the phone by two degrees makes a big deal. Uh, so the Y3 also comes with uh, this. And along with some summers and that heat, you get one more thing, which we don't want, but you do get it. Are, any guesses? Power cuts. So you get power cuts. Now, power cuts are fine. I mean, you know, we've come to terms with that. But they come with one big problem. When the power comes back, sometimes you have voltage surges. And that voltage will surge up to 280 to 300 volts at times. What that can do is completely fry your adapter, or in the worst case, even your phone with it. So the Y3 will have an uh, in-box power adapter that can handle 380 volts. And this comes in every single box. So you're protected against those surges as well. 
So that's the Y3. Uh, we've got one summary video uh, that I'd like to play for you and then call Manu back on. Doesn't it feel great to get noticed? To have in your hands the power of flawless design, the power of attraction. It's hard to look away from a sight so stunning. 32 megapixels of unbeatable clarity and enough room for everyone. So make the most of every moment, even in the dark. Whatever makes you tick, you can now do it all smoothly with the latest tech at your fingertips. And do it for as long as you want, all day and all night long. Because the fun doesn't stop for anyone. And of course, the party is real only when shared. So take a good look. Take in the whole picture. What's holding you back? Reach out for the smartphone experience you've always wanted. And get ready to get noticed. The all-new Redmi Y3. Show me. Okay, so um, Redmi Y3, the 32 megapixel selfie superstar, um, it's a really incredible device. And if you compare it with Y2, it's an all-round upgrade. Almost every single thing has been upgraded from Y2 to Y3. Uh, you look at the uh, front camera from 16 to 32 megapixel. If you look at the screen, a dot notch, a six inch plus device, upgrade the processor from 625, my personal favorite 625, <laughs> uh, right? I was thinking of launching first with 625 to 632. Uh, bigger aspect ratio, better contrast ratio, new design, bigger battery, uh, better video recording, AI uh, face unlock with 360 degree, uh, dual SIM, dual Volti, Corning Gorilla Glass 5, f up to 512 GB, and splash proof. So a significant upgrade from Y2 to Y3. And that's the overall summary for Y3, the 32 megapixel great selfie phone. Now. Uh, I just want all of you guys to stay tuned because we are not launching one, but we're launching many devices today. So let's first talk about the price of the first one, right? <laughs> so uh, the price of Y3, uh, before we go there, of course, uh, this is not the right comparison because some of these devices are much more expensive, come with different kind of specs. But what we wanted to highlight was that if you want a great selfie phone, just a great selfie phone, you need to spend a lot of money in India. You need to spend anywhere between 20 to 30,000 rupees. If you want a 25 or a 32 megapixel selfie phone, right? And if selfie is your main use case. And we're launching Redmi Y3 with two different variants. The first variant is 3 GB, 32 GB. So the price for this one, <laughs> I don't want to do any guesses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just go straight to the point. So the price for 3 GB, 32 GB variant of Redmi Y3 is 9,999 rupees. And we have a 4 GB, 64 GB variant which will sell at 11,999 rupees. So you don't need to spend a lot of money if you want a great selfie phone. You don't need to spend 20 to 30,000 rupees. You can actually get a 32 megapixel selfie phone at just 10,000 or less than 10,000 rupees. So that's the overall summary for Redmi Y2, starting at an incredible price of 9,999. The first sale is next week on 30th of April across me.com, me home stores, and Amazon. And this will also be available across all me studio stores, me stores, and me preferred partners. Thank you. We have a special offer from our partner, Adel, which is giving more than 1,000 GB of 4G data free and unlimited calling with every Redmi Y3 bought by our Mi fans here. So that's all about Y3, the incredible 32 megapixel selfie superstar. Now, we have a few more devices. Hopefully, we'll surprise you guys. So the next one that we are launching is from our Redmi series. Now, this is how... <laughs> 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 so, 
So the next one that we're launching is from our Redmi series. And this is how Redmi series has progressed over the last few years. Redmi 1S was the first $100 device that we launched in India, which was a 4.7 inch with Snapdragon 400. Then 410, Redmi 2, 430, Redmi 3S, 435, Redmi 4, 450, Redmi 5, and Helio P22 with Redmi 6. And all of them were around 4.75 inch, 5.5 inch kind of a screen size. And all of them were on Redmi, on Snapdragon 400 series, or equivalent of that. So even Helio P22 was equivalent to Snapdragon 450, right? So all of them with a similar kind of thing. And the device that we're launching today is a paradigm shift from what we have done till date on our Redmi series. Before I talk about it, uh, let me just show you how all of you guys really love just the Redmi series. And these numbers are only for our numeric Redmi series, which is Redmi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This does not include Redmi A series, which is 5A, 4A, 6A, or Redmi Y series, or any other Redmi, like Redmi Note. So this is how the sales volume has increased over the last few years. Uh, if you look at just last year itself, 2018, almost like seven, seven and a half million phones of just Redmi series was sold in India, right? Thank you. So yes, a lot of you guys are right. We are launching Redmi 7 today. And we're calling this as the ultimate all-rounder because as I said earlier, this is probably the biggest, really the biggest ever upgrade in our Redmi uh, series. And again, I'll call back on stage, Sir Anuj, to talk more about this. Thank you, Manu. All right. Thank you, Manu. So that was the Y3, and now you've got the Redmi 7. Uh, like Manu said, the most disruptive change that we've had to the series ever. And of course, all of you remember, right from the 1S days, it's just I mean, one disruptive Redmi after the other, right? They've done incredibly well. We've seen those numbers. But Redmi 7 takes it to the next level. Uh, it has always delivered on Xiaomi's uh, core philosophy, innovation for everyone, bringing in incredible performance. So let's probably start with performance. Now, for performance, again, like Manu said, massive change. We've gone from Snapdragon 400 all the way to 450. We had a P22 on the Redmi 6. For the first time ever, the Redmi 7 gets a Snapdragon 600 series. And now, uh, because we could not use the 625 on Y3, you get it here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so first time you get a 600 series, but not just any 600 series. You're getting something with a Cryo 250 architecture you get an incredibly powerful chip, the Snapdragon 632. The 632 is based on the Cryo 250 architecture. You've got four performance cores running a custom architecture of the ARM A73. This is a high performance cores. And you've got four battery efficiency or power efficiency cores which are running on A53. So the cryo architecture is really bumping it up. In fact, if you look at the other devices around uh, the Redmi 7, <clears throat> we did some comparison in terms of uh, Geekbench scores. So if you look at the 7870 that's there on the Samsung M10, or the P22 on the Vivo uh, Y93, uh, from both single core and multi-core scores, it absolutely destroys the others. And not just from Geekbench slash CPU scores, even if you look at Anto 2, which is more of an overall system benchmark, uh, the Redmi 7 is on a different level altogether. In fact, this also becomes the first Redmi to cross 100,000 in terms of benchmarks. So a massive jump in terms of performance. Uh, the other thing, and this is something that we've been talking to our Mi fans very regularly for the last six, seven months, was the battery life. Now, on the Redmi 5, you got uh, a Snapdragon 450, and we combined it with a 3300 mAh battery. On the Redmi 6, it was on a Helio P22, and it was combined with a 3000 mAh battery. With Redmi 7, we've decided to go back to 4000. And of course, 
with that, you have all the software optimizations that come in and giving you incredible battery life. Uh, the longest lasting Redmi phone that you've seen. Uh, not just that, what you get is amazing stats. Again, 17 days of standby, 40 hours of music playback, 41 hours of voice calling. So if I look at it from a power perspective, it's unbeatable. It's a Snapdragon 625 based on the cryo architecture, and you've got a 4,000 mAh two-day battery coming in. Now that's from a power performance perspective. Moving to the camera, again, a big jump here. You get AI dual cameras at the back as well. So you get a 12 megapixel camera with a large 1.25 micron pixel size and a depth of field uh, camera, which is a two megapixel. Looking at some of the results here, they're absolutely stunning. So this one, of course, is shot in Kerala. It looks absolutely stunning. It's amazing a device from the Redmi series can now do this. We've come a long way in the last five years. Uh, so you see the entire dynamic range coming in here. Even the sky and the clouds are still visible. And on the other side, you can even see the shadows under the trees. It's an incredible shot, uh, incredible camera uh, overall. And when it gets a little darker, from a night shot perspective also, so this is shot again on the Redmi 7, and this is in Beijing. Uh, you can again see the overall clarity. The noise levels around the buildings are hardly there. Incredible cameras that you can get with the Redmi 7. And you get AI portrait mode. You get amazing portraiture. You get a really good edge detection coming in with this beautiful depth of field uh, on this camera, a couple of other shots. Uh, if you look at his hair, his ears, all of that is clearly marked out from the background. And again, uh, the AI semantic segmentation kicks in, does an incredible job. Again, for the first time ever on the Redmi series, you're getting scene detection as well. We're really stepping it up in terms of camera here. Uh, so you get AI scene detection. It is also able to detect 33 different categories. Uh, case in point, let's take a look at this particular shot. Now, this is a skyline. Uh, it's in London. And what you've got is with scene detection off and a pretty good shot overall. But when you take the same shot with scene detection on, it enhances the overall building, blues up the skies, overall making a much better image. Redmi 7 will also come with full high definition recording at the back at 60 frames per second. So again, like I said, Makhan. Uh, and from the front, we are stepping it up from the 5 megapixel on the Redmi 6 to an 8 megapixel AI selfie in the front as well. So almost everything has been bumped up. And you get some incredible selfies, including the one that you see inside the phone there. A few more examples. Uh, the overall detailing on a face, as well as if you look at uh, the bushes on the side, that light also has been captured well. So it does really well from a dynamic range perspective. And of course, with the front camera, you also get portrait shots. So you get portrait shots from the front camera like this. It looks incredibly amazing. You have AI face unlock as well, built in. So from a camera's perspective, you get a 12 plus 2 at the back. It's a large 1.25 micron. You have AI scene detection. You have AI portrait mode. Uh, you've got full HD recording at 60 frames per second. The selfie camera has been bumped up as well. So you have auto HDR. You have AI beautify. You have AI portrait mode even in the front. Another first for the Redmi series is the all new design. We are also, you've, you've come to know how the Redmi series has been from the 1S time all the way to the Redmi 6. We are changing it completely. So you get an all new design on the Redmi Notes, Redmi 7, sorry, uh, on the Redmi 7. And the same Redmi Note or our design coming in here. Uh, our biggest uh, screen so far has been around five, five and a half uh, inches uh, with the Redmi 5, Redmi 6 we are stepping it up. With the Redmi 7, you get a 6.26. <laughs> and not just that, it's going from an 18 is to 9 to a 19 is to 9 with a dot notch. You get a high contrast ratio and a bright, vibrant display. Now, this display also, because, like I said, we don't compromise on quality, is with Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Again, a first in its segment 
Now this display being awesome, we've also got uh, the reading mode certified by TUV, so it cuts out blue light, lets you sleep a lot better. And when it came to the, the craftsmanship of the Aura design, we took a slight detour. So you saw the Aura prism on the Y3. Uh, on this, you call something called Aura smoke. So imagine if two colored smoke come in together to form this pattern. It looks absolutely stunning. In fact, I don't think I can explain it better than you can show it. So amazing combination of red and black combined with matte black frame, it looks absolutely stunning. It's nothing like you've seen before. And especially for the Redmi series, it's a massive departure from the design language that we've come to know. And this color is called the Lunar Red. Looks great. We've got one more color with the Aura Smoke philosophy. And this one is going from a darker shade of blue to a lighter one with that entire smoke effect coming in. This one is called the Comet Blue. And of course, as the key option, we also have black uh, or the Eclipse Black. So it's, it's classy, it's traditional, and of course, uh, most sought out. We've not forgotten the functional aspects of Aura Design. In the Redmi 7, you still have a headphone jack, you still have the IR blaster, and you get a 2 plus 1 card slot as well. You have a fingerprint sensor. Uh, surprisingly, some phones in this price segment forgot about that. Uh, we've kept it. Uh, talking about quality, we still have a splash-proof P2I coating, uh, so you're protected against that with the uh, buttons and all the ports uh, protected. So overall, from a design perspective, you've got a largest display that we've ever put on the Redmi series. You have a 6.26 HD Plus with dot notch. You have uh, a brighter uh, display, more contrast ratio coming in, protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. You've got Aura Smoke design, giving you that incredible uh, lunar red. And uh, you've got still all the elements of a functional design that is needed, that was asked by our fans to us. So that is the Redmi 7, uh, uh, the biggest upgrade that we've ever done in terms of performance, an amazing 4,000 mAh battery, uh, bump up on the cameras, a complete departure on the design, and the biggest display we've ever put on the Redmi 7. So here's a video that captures all of this, and then I'll invite Manu back on stage. That's uh, Redmi 7, a massive, massive upgrade over Redmi 6 or anything that we have done in the Redmi series. Like there's no commonality except for the name between Redmi 7 and any of its predecessors. For the first time, we have a Red, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 series, 632, a much better, much more powerful processor, dot notch design, uh, 19 to 9 aspect ratio, aura smoke design, we have upgraded the selfie camera, 
a bigger battery, better video recording, almost every single thing is better. And we also have, for the first time, AI scene detection in Redmi 7, Corning Gorilla Glass 5, and it is splash proof. Almost so many things that we've introduced for the first time in a Redmi series. A six, again, a 600 series processor, a dot notch, or a design, and almost a large number of things. So this is the overall summary of Redmi 7. Now, if you look at the price of Redmi 7, right? <laughs> OK, you, you don't even know which variants we are launching. <laughs> uh, so this is a really incredible product as compared to other devices available in this price segment, right? Uh, this is. This is a processor which was available on Redmi 6. This is a year-old processor. This is a three-year-old processor, almost like 625. Uh, similar battery. This is the only one which comes, which comes with Corning Gorilla Glass 5. One of the best cameras on both front and back. And of course, they're at 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. So for Redmi 7, we're launching two variants. For Redmi 7, we're launching two variants, and we have decided not to launch 2 plus 16. Because we know a lot of our Mi fans want to take pictures, and in today's world, you have a lot of pictures, videos, songs, videos, everything to store, and hence you need a minimum 32 GB storage. So the first variant that we are launching is a 2 GB RAM and 32 GB storage, and that variant, the 232 one, is going to sell at, you are right, at 799. And the second one that we are launching is a 3GB, 32GB variant, which is going to sell at 899. It's almost like you guys can read my mind. So it's an incredible device, of course, much better specs, and again, an honest price. So this is the overall summary of Redmi 7. And this is going to be available next week, starting 29th of April at 12 noon across me.com, me home stores, and Amazon. And this will also be available across all our me studio stores, me stores, and me preferred partners. On this device, we have an offer from a partner, Reliance Geo, which will give double the data for four years, and will also give 2,400 rupee cash back for every Mi fan who buys a Redmi 7. So we've launched Redmi Y3, the 32 megapixel selfie superstar, and we've launched Redmi 7, which is the biggest ever upgrade on a Redmi series. Should we launch more devices? Yes! OK. So we, you know, Xiaomi is an IoT company. We are probably the world's largest IoT platform with more than 130 million connected devices. And we've been launching a lot of our IoT devices slowly and gradually in India. So we're launching one more IoT device today. <laughs> from our IoT portfolio. And to explain this, I will show you a quick video. Hey Google, show the surprise to our Mi fans. Okay, turning the living room bulb on. So yes, we are launching Mi LED Smart Bulb in India. The biggest thing about this IoT device from the house of Xiaomi is that this has 16 million colors, 16 million. Even if you keep changing the color every single second, probably it will take like few years, maybe five or 10 years, to change all colors, every single color. And it has a, bat it has a life of about 11 years, 11 years. This can be controlled through Mi Home app and also through Alexa or Google Home. Now the interesting thing is, if you buy other smart bulbs in India, you typically need a bridge or a hub to connect it to internet, right? And Mi LED smart bulb 
does not require any bridge or hub. So you can just buy it, pair it with your Mi Home app, and start using it. So this device will go on crowdfunding only on me.com. So do check out me.com website or me store app on 26th, which is day after tomorrow at 12 noon. So this is a new IoT device that we are launching in India. So that's all, guys. We have launched three devices today. The 32 megapixel Redmi Y3, the ultimate all-rounder, a massive upgrade in our Redmi series, which is Redmi 7, and Mi LED Smart Bulb. Thank you so much, guys, for everybody joining in. And we'll have a photo op. Redmi 7, this is Redmi Y3.